Hello and welcome back to the Genesis Designs and Modelcraft bench and the latest instalment of the book of Genesis and in this one I'm going to talk about paint so I am looking towards moving into demonstrating how to spray with an airbrush I've already looked at airbrushes in general and talked about using them as dripping them so now that the next obvious thing for me to do is to start to approach how to use them um, so I think the best place to start with on that score is the paint so I'm going to talk you through the paints that I use it's important to be clear about this there are a lot of paints out there on the market almost all of them are absolutely viable and have strengths and weaknesses um, a lot of the decision behind what paint you use will be personal preference what you get on with it may not be the same as what I get on with for various reasons some of which I will touch on as we go through this um, the reason I'm not covering every option out there is because I can't truthfully comment with any authority on things that I don't use I use what I use for good reasons I'm going to show you that I'm going to explain why I use them and what I thin them with so that when we move on to the actual airbrushing part anybody who doesn't understand anything I say in there can come back to this video check it out and go oh yeah see I don't intend each video to necessarily be its own episode in its own right I will sort of explain things multiple times as we go through the, these things but at the same time I can't explain everything every time so that's why I'm doing this here anyway without further ado the meat and potatoes of my painting is acrylic, so-called acrylic paints um, and straight away we get into con some confusion because acrylic paint has two very distinct forms in the hobby world um, I could start talking about binders and polymers and things but I'm going to make it a lot more basic than that this type of acrylic, it generally comes in this type of uh, container as well, although not always is uh, formulated usually for brush and airbrush but sometimes airbrush or brush specific um, and can be thinned is thinned with pure water just water nothing else is required this is a water-based acrylic paint these tend to be not great to spray with um, that is because the paint tends to want to dry on the tip very quickly which will cause a a build up of dry paint on the end of the needle and eventually stop your airbrush from working properly which is very irritating it means you have to keep cleaning the end of your needle sometimes every few seconds when it's bad and the other problem with them is they tend to bead up on the surface the adhesion is quite minimal in some cases and they're very fragile uh, paint finishes even when they're dry very often um, but that that isn't to say that you can't use them they they are very good these the modern sort of amav mig and ak ones are, are perfectly viable and if you are working in an environment where you've got family members pets children uh, a small area that you have to work in you don't have extraction or good ventilation any of those things or if you have any lung issues for that matter uh, and you don't want to be breathing solvents all the time these are the obvious choice and they're perfectly usable but I only use these rarely. I do have some, probably a dozen or so, various different colours. I use them rarely and I more often than not will use these when I want to brush paint something, uh, detail painting and that. They're very, very useful for that because they do brush paint a lot more easily than these paints do. So that's a water-based, as in you can thin it with water. Okay, got that one out of the way. So let's just move you over here. Acrylics then from Tamiya and Mr Hobby or Gunzo Sangyo these can also be thinned with water believe it or not it's absolutely possible to do it and they work better actually than the other type of acrylics even when they're only thinned with water uh, the next step up from water is isopropyl alcohol uh, but what I use the vast majority of the time is Mr Colour Thinner which is a lacquer thinner um, differences between the two if you had if I was forced I would say these are the better paint the Mr Hobby aqueous uh, or hobby color is a better paint than the Tamiya it tends to be a semi gloss finish it's more durable sticks better sprays nicer it's, it's just a better paint but the reason that I increasingly use Tamiya is because it's much easier to get hold of in the UK 
and considerably cheaper as well to be honest. Um, the colour range in Mr Hobby is far superior to Tamiya in terms of ready mixed colours. I um, very very often have to mix colours myself with Tamiya but that isn't something which really phases me so I'm not too worried. So yeah, 99% of what I do I use these. Mr Hobby or Tamiya, they're interchangeable, you can mix them together, they're both thin with all the same things. So that's the acrylics. Then I have a fairly considerable range of lacquers. Now the difference here, and this one's called Mr Colour instead of Hobby Colour, it's still Mr Hobby or Gunze. Um, the difference here is you cannot thin these with water. They're not, not, they're not even pretending to be acrylics. Although they're probably still an acrylic base, this time it's a solvent and you have to use a solvent to thin them with. Um, same uh, justification applies with the range, the Tamiya lacquer paints the relatively new addition to the UK market but already are easier to get hold of than Mr Colour. Similar price but these do spray absolutely beautifully, they're fabulous paints, um, really really user friendly, love them. Mr Colour tends to go further, it's thicker in the jar, you need to put more thinner in it. Um, it's probably slightly better value for money than the Tamiya but in terms of uh, the use and the finish you get they're very comparable. If you've got any old stocks kicking about, olden days Mr Colour looked like this with the Gucci lids, the more modern ones look like this. So that's lacquer. There are other out, uh, lacquer paints, you've got an outlier here in the form of Mr Paint. I do have a few Mr Paints but it's not something, it's not a go to for me. Uh, I find them to be quite poor value for money frankly. 30mm um, jar, like your Alclad jar, pre-mixed so it's ready for use uh, and that's why it's bad value. This is only a 10mm jar but you, you're going to thin this 7 to 3. You're going to get a lot more out of this than you will out of this because, because you do thin this so much. Um, I also thin Mr Paint. I've, if you're just blatting some camo on, not shading or needing any real finesse, these are fine as they come. If you want to do fine lines and whatnot, you do need to thin these a little bit. Uh, but again, some of the Mr Paints are, are very good colour matches uh, and they're very nice paints to use. I've not got any issues with them other than value for money is a bit off. So there's a few there, but they're not a staple of the collection at all. When it comes to metallics then, this is a difficult one. I've not found yet any water based or water thinnable metallic that looks any good ever. I'm sure, I'm sure there are some out there but I haven't used them yet. Um, I use these. Alclad was my staple for a long long time. I've moved away from Alclads a bit because the shelf life on them is questionable. Um, some colours last and last and last like this one is doing, other colours don't and what happens is the metallic particles which you can see in the bottom just mixing in there, they'll come out of solution and you'll end up with a sort of a dark looking thinner with a load of blackish looking blobs in it, uh, uh, it's unusable at that point and it's some kind of weird corrosion effect with the, um, the flakes that make up the colour. So you can spend what are these six pounds odd on a bottle of paint and have no knowledge of how long it's going to last. I've had some that, have la that haven't been usable even the first time I've opened them up. So I've moved away from those a little bit um, and this is now my go-to spraying metallic AK Extreme Metal. Um, these nominally are enamel but I, I thin them with the same Mr Colour Thinner. Um, absolutely fantastic stuff. Again, it's not the cheapest, but it's quite a decent sized jar. Uh, you will thin it a bit, but the, they're so forgiving to use. They're really good bright colours, but really very, very fine metal particles, so they don't look out of scale, particularly for the most part. They have a really good finish, they're quite robust. Um, and also, the surface prep standard, whilst it does have to be high, doesn't seem to have to be as high as it does for Alclad. They have a much more forgiving system this. Uh, I really love these and this this is all I'll be buying going forward. Once the Alclads run out they won't be replaced. And then sitting on the flank, Mr Metal Colour. Now this stuff 
It's turbo expensive. I think they're three pounds a jar now. Very, very expensive, but absolutely phenomenal paint. And I use this the majority of the time actually by brush. Put this on with a paintbrush. Um, and it's so versatile. You can brush it on in different ways, over brush it as it's drying and get all sorts of different effects and sort of colours coming up. And then once it is dry, you can buff it to give to give a polished effect. It's like the old um, Humbrol metal coats used to be back in the day before they got rubbish. Um, Mr. Metal Colour, thoroughly recommend this. Um, I have half a dozen of these in various shades and I use them on every single model I build but with a paintbrush. They do spray beautifully, but in a world where you can just pour this straight out of a jar, <laughs> I just don't bother. So that's those. Um, so let's just quickly look at thinners. Uh, my my normal thinner is Mr. Colour. It's Mr. Hobby Mr. Colour. I normally use the standard thinner, which is just Mr. Colour thinner, um, but that currently is very out of stock almost everywhere so I've had to be, use the levelling thinner for the past two two uh, containers worth um, never bothered before I've never felt the need and it is a little bit more expensive but the difference is that the levelling thinner is, a, is what is known in the automotive trade as a slow thinner or retarded thinner it's designed to work in hotter temperatures basically it will give you a longer flash off time and it will give the paint more of a chance to smooth itself out and flow out as it dries. The rapid thinner is the exact opposite and it will flash off virtually instantly. Um, particularly useful for metallics actually. So what I've done because I prefer the standard thinner is I just mix these two together to give me an approximation of the standard and I decant it into a small useful little dropper bottle rather than tipping it out of these every time although these these caps are quite useful so that's Mr Colour uh, about eight pounds I think for the levelling the, the other mainstay for thinning is isopropyl alcohol um, most acrylic style uh, paint thinners in the hobby industry are essentially isopropyl alcohol mixed with a certain amount of water and maybe a few detergents um, so cut to the chase, go straight to source, buy isopropyl alcohol, you can get it on eBay or Amazon no problem at all, um, obviously this is a 2 litre can uh, and it tends to last quite a while but I use this both for thinning and for cleaning the airbrush as well and anything else around the house that needs cleaning, when your kids use that to sharpie that they're not meant to use and draw all over the dining table this this will get it off <laughs> and the other one which I don't use as much but it's here is the Tamiya lacquer thinner and again they offer a standard thinner and a retarded thinner so for hotter temperatures hot days like it is now in the UK and apologies if you can hear my fan in the background but it is extremely hot at the minute uh, the retarded type gives you that slower drying time and then there's the standard thinner they don't do a rapid thinner yet, they probably will. And again, these anywhere that sells like, Tamiya lacquer paints will have these, so they're quite easy to get a hold of. And one thing I have noted with these is they're quite a bit hotter than Mr. Colour. Um, the solvent effect is higher, so where I'm quite happy to use Mr. Colour to wash paint off a model, and I don't, I'm not, I'm never concerned about it harming the surface, even on transparencies don't do it with these because you do run the risk of melting the surface of your kit a little bit with these so it is, it is hotter but by the same token if you're having problems getting paint to stick it's more likely to stick with a hotter thinner than it is otherwise Tamiya also do a paint retarder small jar and this is quite handy you can use, because you can use this with any paint any of these paints that will take a lacquer thinner will also take this so if you want to brush paint something and you absolutely have to paint it, brush paint it with this, if you pop a bit of this retarder in and all of a sudden it will brush paint like a dream. Um, you add this up to about 10% just to again slow that drying time down. If you're struggling with um, your airbrush needle picking up paint or the, the clogging this will help. Again anywhere that sells the Tamiya lacquer paint will have this.
that's those and the final thing to look at I suppose for the paint paint process of things is, is clears and these are a bit of a minefold minefield in and of their own right um, the mainstay here for, for a gloss finish is X22 it's really important if you're going to use X22 that you do not use Tamiya's acrylic thinner if you use X20A as a thinner in this it's horrible it won't work and you'll curse me up and down the place don't do it <laughs> thin it with Mr Colour Thinner I have a, one of the old fashioned large jars and what I do is I tip a normal sized jar straight into this and then wash the jar out with Mr Colour and tip that in there as well so it's 50-50 before you even start with thinner and I then thin it from there per job uh, but always use Mr Colour Thinner and it turns this previously unusable nastiness into this glorious gloss finish which I use on almost anything that I need to be gloss. The other gloss that I have is the Mr Hobby lacquer based GX112 super super gloss clear UV cut lots of words this is very expensive I like the Mr Metal colours it's a premium price again you thin it with Mr Colour Thinner and it's a very heavy bodied paint this so you can thin it a lot you're looking at 75% thin as a standard with this stuff uh, the benefits over X22 it, it cures quicker basically um, the, the sort of touch dry time on them both is comparable but the actual through cure time is faster on this and it's a slightly harder finish when it is cured than this is that has both advantages and disadvantages there, depending on what you're doing so I do have this and I do use it but that is my mainstay for gloss finish x22 and for matte then finally um i spent years looking for a good matte varnish uh, because flat finishes for me i don't like them to be too flat for one thing and there's this propensity for flat flat clears to bleed the colors down because of the sort of almost talc like component that you have in a flat clear I get a, this is a jar of Tamiya flat you can see how white it is in the jar that's the matting agent in, in the paint and it lead, can lead to a sort of a chalky finish and it, it sort of bleaches out the colours on the models in, in a way that I find deeply unattractive and I've spent years looking for a flat varnish that doesn't do that or that does that the least and recently within the last year or two thanks to Mike Williams actually I started to use Galleria um, and I still do use this this is it's meant for paintings artist stuff as you can probably gather by the fact that it's Windsor and Newton um, it's like wallpaper looks like wallpaper paste in the jar it's quite thick but believe it or not it will spray straight from the tub quite happily um, comes in this handy little applicator as well I don't spray it neat I thin it with Tamiya's X20 acrylic thinner because something about the mixture of detergents and alcohol in that just works with this paint and I keep that in an old Tamiya jar ready mixed ready to go and by varying the amount of X20 you put in this you can vary how dull the finish will be but this tints the colours minimally it's very 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 good and another bonus with this is the price because this 250 ml bot bottle cost about six seven pounds from Hobbycraft, so it's very good value that's going to last a while much more recently though thanks to uncle night shift and, and uh, via drew manton uh, the vms so tempting to try and say it like night shift does but <laughs> Um, the VMS or Vantage Modelling Solutions I think they're based in East Euro Eastern Europe and these are quite simply without any shadow of a doubt the best flat varnishes I've ever used bar none they're, they're absolutely fantastic um, satin and matte obviously this is flatter than this um, you can use it straight from the bottle and it comes with this beautiful little dropper nozzle so you can just tip it into your airbrush literally drop by drop so you never need to waste any it washes out of the airbrush with IPA I haven't bothered thinning it I just use it straight as it is 
um, and it's absolutely foolproof it you just spray it on heavy wet coat if you want just a decent coat and leave it alone and it will just sort itself out to give an absolutely beautiful finish and to show you what I'm talking about I've got two black Spitfires on the corner of the bench and black's the worst colour in the world to want to put flat varnish on because of the this greying effect now if you look at these you might just be able to see a distinct line along the edge of the gun bay door there I deliberately hard masked these wings and then sprayed the satin VMS varnish on and you can see this is Tamiya's XF86 flat rubber black and it actually looks darker with the VMS on than it did before and you can see how it's actually made it slightly glossier as well this one is Tamiya's LP5 which is lacquer paint satin black and you can see here the only difference is the level of gloss it hasn't changed the colour at all and that right there is a ringing endorsement I, um, I think for any halfway serious finish this VMS is all I'm going to be using here from here on in um, it's absolutely fantastic stuff it costs 6 99 if I memory serves per tub and you can get it in the UK from is it scale model shop I'll stick a link in the description um, rather than having to order it from Eastern Europe and uh, and deal with all of that so there's a UK uh, supplier now best map by ever bar none so there you go that is my system in a nutshell that's everything I use t typically day to day there are obviously other paints that I use now and again I've got some Hataka and I've got I've even got some Humbrols there's bits and pieces that sit around the edges but they're not my normal day to day everyday paint finishes that is these with IPA and Mr Colour Thinner so there you go that's it for this episode in the next one I'll start showing you about how to use your airbrush how to thin your paints how much to thin your paints and all that kind of stuff so until then um, look after yourselves and look after each other and Genesis out